So about a year ago on this channel, we started a new series that was focused on not the latest and greatest electric vehicle you could buy, but rather improving your existing vehicle to give it additional value and to basically keep your EV for longer than you might otherwise have done. And that video series, which by the way is still ongoing, we've got other things we need to do to the car and we've got some planned upgrades on the way, focused on things you could do to keep the car's value high, like getting a ceramic coating put on the car's paintwork. We've done a video on that and it's proven very popular, through to adding aftermarket things to make quality of life improvements and also adding additional tech. So in this car's case, adding a comma three. Comma three, for those who don't know, is a piece of hardware that you can add to pretty much any car with a little bit of, of help. And it makes it possible for you to have a, a semi-autonomous driver assistance feature in your car. When we made the original video, we installed Comma 3 along with a custom harness for the Chevrolet Bolt EV. This model year of Chevrolet Bolt EV isn't supported out of the box by Comma AI, but you can buy an aftermarket harness that makes it compatible. And then you can use a fork of OpenPilot, which is the software that runs on the Comma 3 units, to give you hands-off driver assistance. Now, for the last year, we have been using OPGM, that's Open Pilot GM branch, which is designed to be fully compatible with the Chevrolet Bolt EV. But today, we're putting a different version of that through its paces, and it's got the cutest name possible. Meet Frog Pilot. So, what is Frog Pilot. Well, for those who don't know, Frog Pilot is another software branch of the Open Pilot operating system for Comma 3 and Comma 3X hardware. It is compatible with the Chevrolet Volt EVs that are compatible with OPGM. So as long as your Volt EV was compatible with OPGM, you can run Frog Pilot. The difference being that Frog Pilot has some interesting features, such as autonomous lane change. You just hit the indicator and it will change lanes for you, which is really cool. It also has the same lane keep assist, so I can, I can go back and change lanes here and it will just work for me. It also has the, the laneless mode operation, so I can't actually drive this piece of road right now in my F-150 Lightning because they've been doing road work on the road and there are no side lane markings, which is what Ford's Blue Cruise absolutely has to have. This works just fine without it. So in addition to being able to automatically change lanes, you also have a lot of features that aren't in OPGM, such as you might find in Sunny Pilot. You've got the, the speed limit change notification, you've got the open maps integration. You've also got much more control over things like your cornering behavior and your driving modes when you compare it to OPGM. Now the trade-off is that OPGM is based on a much older version of the Open Pilot system. And to be honest, I find it a little more robust. So OPGM has less tendency to do something that it shouldn't. It's also tends to be a little bit more reliable in the way it behaves around other vehicles. You'll notice Frog Pilot there is a little bit unsure when it changed. It was a little bit kind of timid about making that lane change maneuver, but it adds a whole load of features that makes it a little bit more fun if you like tinkering and experimenting. You can change, for example, the map icons. You can change uh, the, the sound packs. It makes different sounds and you can have different icons. Right now we've got the stock frog pilot icon, which includes a, a, a lovely little green frog instead of a steering wheel to uh, notify that you are in fact in semi-autonomous mode. And if I was to move the steering wheel, the frog moves in 
response to that. The other thing I like about this is when you are not in semi-autonomous mode, the car actually shows what you're doing with your, with your steering wheel and also what you're doing with your pedals. So right now, it will show you that I have got my brake on. So that little red icon that just popped up there, that is saying that I am braking. If I put my foot on the go pedal, you get that green accelerator pedal. It's, it's a kind of a, a cute little uh, notification that you are doing um, particular things to the vehicle. Some people won't like that, but I quite like it. The other thing you get is you get the, the speed limit indications. I haven't really been able to get to the bottom of that yet, though. It seems to be a little, it does seem to be a little bit inaccurate there when it comes to exactly what those speed limits do. But the nice thing is it tells you if you want to acknowledge that the speed limit has changed. So you can say, hey, the speed limit is now 45. And it also detects the lane width for me, which is kind of useful. And of course, unlike a lot of semi-autonomous driver assistance features, this will work on pretty much any road you want it to. So I can put it into semi-autonomous driving right now. It is following the cars in front. There's lots of heavy traffic around. It's the start of rush hour. It's detecting the car in front of me. It is trying to decide what speed it's going to go at. And I can tell it, yes, okay, I'm okay with you traveling at 40 miles per hour because this is running on a Chevrolet Bolt, it doesn't do full emergency braking, so I do need to keep my foot hovering over the brake pedal. But as you can see, Frog Pilot's doing a really good job following the line of the traffic. As I say, it will ask me to take control of the steering wheel. You can get it to say some more colorful things instead. But if you see right now, that is the car braking. I have not touched the brake pedal, so it's come to basically coming to a stop on its own and when the lights change it will keep that second or two distance from the car in front and it will speed up for me apparently you can get frog pilot i think to do some kind of navigation on open pilot which is something I'd, I'd love to play with i haven't been able to get that to work on this particular car with this particular build but i have heard of other people doing it Frog Pilot, just like OPGM, it is free for you to download and use. You do just have to buy the hardware first. Now, you will notice that I have hit the brake pedal myself. I actually hit the, the hand brake lever, and that's because in this particular version, it doesn't have fully experimental mode activated. You can set it to have the car respond to traffic lights and stop signs in experimental mode but like all of the the open pilot experimental modes i found it's a little sketch from time to time now i'm gonna move over to give this cyclist a little bit more room and the car just did that for me it checked made sure there was no one in my blind spot and then it moved over for me it's kind of bizarre how competent this is. It's not in the uncanny valley yet. And like I say, I think OPGM is slightly better. Um, but if you have a Chevrolet Bolt and you have comma hardware, it's certainly something to consider. Should you use this to have completely hands-off driving uh, for long distance trips? Well, probably not. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily completely cede control of my car to this system right now for example i am using the accelerator pedal to control my speed i'm just using the steering wheel there to give that cyclist a bit of extra width and a little space but now i can let go of the steering wheel it's in always on lateral mode which means it will always steer you in the correct direction for your lane and that is a a mode that I really enjoy when I'm driving around town. So I'm controlling the speed with the accelerator and the brake pedal. I could hit the speed button and, and have the car take over, but I actually quite like having control over the speed and I find it behaves much more smoothly than it would if I did everything uh, in, I suppose, semi-autonomous mode. Because I have arthritis, 
in my my right hand and from time to time it can be kind of painful it's really nice to have the car do some of the driving for me even if it doesn't do all of the driving and while I don't think it is yet at the point where it's 100% uh, on par with say Ford Blue Cruise or Tesla Autopilot this system is completely open source this system is something you can buy and use in your own way technically it's still experimental and so it is up to you to decide whether you're going to do it for those who have asked though if you have a Ford vehicle there is a lot of progress being made on uh, open pilot for Ford vehicles. I know some people have been testing it in Ford Mustang Mark E's. There's now a, a group of people who are working to get it working with a Ford F-150 Lightning. Unfortunately, like the Chevrolet Bolt EV of this generation, I suppose the first generation Chevrolet Bolt EV, you do need a special harness. But as soon as we lose our F-150 Lightning's Blue Cruise functionality in a couple of years time, our plan is to buy another one of these and put it in the F-150 Lightning so that when we're on the freeway, when we're driving um, a long distance, we can take our hands off the wheel. We still will have our eyes up and our eyes on the road. But it does definitely reduce driver fatigue. As Kate demonstrated a couple of years ago, when she drove with open pilot in her Kia e Nero all the way down to San Diego for fully charged live. It really does make driving uh, less stressful for the most part and definitely um, more chill, which is the thing that, that Comma likes in its advertising slogan to say that it makes driving more chill. So let me know what you think. If you have a comma based system, I'd love to know if you use it. Uh, have you tried Frog Pilot? Uh, installing Frog Pilot is really easy. You just go to uh, the, the page that I'll link to in the down below and follow the instructions there and it'll tell you how to install it on your device. Uh, but if you have OPGM and you'd like to switch to Frog Pilot, I think it's well worth a try, especially as it's basically free as long as you've got the comma hardware. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube. They help cover our bills, pay our team, and they make sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month or if you pay yearly just over ten dollars a year a massive welcome to our newest supporters carol buawa rolfondo michael owen winter and wilton live to join the list and get your shout out become a paid patreon member for your week of fame and of course, if you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. We even have a good old-fashioned PO box that you can reach us at. Address you'll find linked below. And of course, if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below as well. This month, we are celebrating Pride with an amazing new t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator, Erin. You can get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store. We've also got some fantastic content coming up, so make sure that you've hit the subscribe button on either Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think this one is also well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!